In the icy expanse of the Arctic, a team of researchers embarked on a routine expedition to study climate change. Little did they know that they were about to uncover one of the greatest mysteries of the 20th century, buried deep within an iceberg. But hey, before we dive into the story, do yourself a favor and pause the video right now. Go hit that like button and let's see if we can make this video reach 1,000 likes. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to your favorite story channel. Also, make sure to ring the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest and weirdest stories. Trust us, you won't want to miss what's coming your way. Now sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed as we take you on an unforgettable ride. Don't forget to engage with us in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Dr. Lucas Hayes, an experienced glaciologist, led the team. He had dedicated his life to studying the shifting glaciers and icebergs of the Arctic. The harsh environment had always fascinated him, with its ability to preserve the past in layers of ice. On this particular journey, the team was equipped with the latest technology including ground-penetrating radar and thermal imaging cameras. Their mission was straightforward, to collect ice core samples and measure the thickness of the surrounding glaciers. However, fate had something else in store for them. As they navigated through a narrow passage between two towering icebergs, the radar began to pick up something unusual. The screen displayed a large, irregular object embedded deep within one of the icebergs. Initially, Dr. Hayes dismissed it as a natural anomaly, a massive boulder or a chunk of ancient ice. But as the radar continued to scan the object, its shape became more defined, revealing what appeared to be the outline of an aircraft. Curiosity peaked, Doctor. Hayes ordered the team to investigate further. The idea of finding an airplane in the middle of the Arctic was absurd, yet the radar was telling them otherwise. As they moved closer, the outline became clearer, this was indeed a plane, frozen in the ice for what could have been decades. The team set up camp near the iceberg, eager to explore their find. They used thermal imaging to estimate the age of the ice surrounding the aircraft. The readings suggested that the plane had been trapped for at least 70 years. Dr. Hayes, with his extensive knowledge of Arctic history, quickly realized that they might have stumbled upon a World War II relic. Planes had gone missing in the Arctic during the war, lost in storms, or shot down by enemy forces. Could this be one of those lost planes? The team began the painstaking process of excavating the aircraft from the ice. It was a slow and dangerous operation, requiring precision and patience. The Arctic was unforgiving, and any misstep could result in the iceberg collapsing or the plane being damaged. As the days passed, more of the plane's fuselage emerged from the ice, revealing its worn-out metal and faded insignias. It was an American bomber, most likely a B-24 Liberator, one of the workhorses of the U.S. military during World War II. The excitement among the team was palpable. They had made a significant discovery, one that would make headlines around the world. But as they continued to uncover more of the plane, something unsettling began to happen. The thermal cameras detected movement within the aircraft something was alive inside. At first, the team thought it might be a glitch in the equipment, but the readings persisted. Whatever was inside the plane was moving, albeit slowly. Dr. Hayes, always the rational scientist, tried to calm the team. He suggested that the movement could be caused by the shifting ice or the plane settling as it thawed. But deep down, he felt a growing unease. Finally, after days of careful excavation, they managed to open the plane's hatch. What they found inside left them speechless. The interior was remarkably well-preserved, as if time had stood still. The seats, control panels, and even the personal belongings of the crew were all intact. But the most shocking discovery was the crew themselves, frozen in place, yet disturbingly lifelike. Their expressions were frozen in terror, eyes wide open as if they had seen something horrifying in their final moments. Dr. Hayes and his team were stunned. The bodies were perfectly preserved, a macabre testament to the plane's final moments. But how had they remained so well preserved for so long? And what had caused such fear in their last moments? These questions hung heavily in the air, 
as the team documented their findings. As they continued to explore the plane, they found more disturbing clues. The radio equipment was still functional, albeit damaged, and there were signs that the crew had tried to send out a distress signal. But there was no record of any such signal being received. It was as if the plane had vanished without a trace, only to be discovered decades later. The team also found strange markings on the walls of the fuselage, etched into the metal as if by hand. They were unlike anything Dr. Hayes had ever seen, symbols and patterns that seemed almost alien in nature. The crew's logbook, found near the pilot's seat, provided some answers but raised even more questions. The last entry was dated November 7, 1944, and it spoke of an unusual light in the sky, followed by extreme turbulence and a sudden drop in temperature. The pilot had written of a strange, overwhelming fear that had gripped the crew causing panic and confusion. Dr. Hayes couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this story than a simple plane crash. The markings, the crew's final moments, and the strange movement detected earlier all pointed to something beyond their understanding. But what? As the team prepared to leave the site, a storm began to brew on the horizon. The Arctic weather was notoriously unpredictable and they knew they had to leave quickly before they were trapped. But as they packed up their equipment, the radar picked up movement again. This time, it was coming from the surrounding ice. Panic set in as the team realized that the ice around them was shifting, as if something beneath it was awakening. The storm intensified, whipping up snow and ice, reducing visibility to almost nothing. Dr. Hayes shouted for everyone to get to the safety of the camp, but the howling wind drowned out his voice. In the chaos, one of the team members, Sarah, became separated from the group. She was the youngest member, a brilliant but inexperienced researcher. Dr. Hayes, fighting against the wind, made his way towards where he had last seen her. The radar was still picking up movement, but now it was all around them, as if the ice itself was alive. Finally, he found Sarah, huddled near the plane, staring at something in the distance. Dr. Hayes followed her gaze and saw it, a figure, or what appeared to be a figure, moving slowly towards them. It was barely visible through the swirling snow, but there was no mistaking its human-like shape. Fear gripped Dr. Hayes as he pulled Sarah to her feet. They had to get out of there, but the figure was getting closer. It moved with an unnatural fluidity, almost gliding across the ice. The storm raged on, but the figure seemed unaffected its dark silhouette cutting through the whiteout. Dr. Hayes and Sarah ran, their breath coming in ragged gasps as they struggled through the snow. The rest of the team had already reached the camp, frantically packing up and preparing to leave. Dr. Hayes could feel the figure behind them, its presence heavy and oppressive. They reached the camp just as the storm reached its peak. The team wasted no time in boarding the transport vehicle, the engines roaring to life. As they sped away from the site, Dr. Hayes looked back, his heart pounding. The figure was gone, but the sense of dread remained. The journey back was tense and silent, each team member lost in their thoughts. They had escaped the storm, but the memory of the figure, the plane, and the strange occurrences would haunt them forever. Upon their return, the team was debriefed and their findings were classified. The official report would state that they had discovered a World War II aircraft, its crew frozen in time. But the details of what they had experienced, the movement, the figure, the unexplainable fear, were left out. Dr. Hayes, now back in the warmth of civilization, couldn't shake the feeling that they had encountered something beyond their comprehension. The Arctic, with its vast and mysterious ice, had always been a place of secrets and they had uncovered one of its darkest. The world would never know the full story, and perhaps it was better that way. Some mysteries, Dr. Hayes thought, are meant to remain frozen in time, buried deep in the ice where they belong.